Hi there, Steve Kaufman. Um, today I want to talk about language learning apps, language learning tools, the language learning environment that we live in. Uh, remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. You know, you can click on the bell to get notifications. Um, I've been learning languages since, I don't know, I mean, we had French at school and I got particularly keen as a 17 year old, 18 year old in Montreal at the McGill University, uh, ultimately went to France, uh, studied Chinese, studied Japanese or learned it living in Japan and have learned a bunch of other languages. And that goes back over 50 years. Never has it been easier to learn languages. And part of the reason is because of the, the variety of call them language apps, uh, language tools, uh, language services that are available to us today. And I'm only going to touch on a few of them because I can't remember them all. But let's just start with, you know, uh, smartphones. I carry in my iPhone a language lab, a range of audio and text material that would be the envy of any language lab 50, 20, 30, 40 years ago. The, the range of material that I have. And if my phone gets full, I can park them in my computer and get them later. So that, that and, and I can listen on my iPhone, I can do link on my iPhone, I can read, I can look things up, I can go to Google Translate on my iPhone or other dictionaries and, and I'm just touching the surface because other people, I mean, the, the range of language apps that you can find in the, in the uh, app store is, is, is enormous. It's so, so many that you, you don't know which ones are going to be useful. Many of them are not very useful, but I think the, the smartphone itself, and of course, you know, similar to the smartphone, you have the iPad, which I tend to use more for language learning, especially if I'm working on link or uh, the iPod touch, which I use when I go jogging or when I you know, don't want to take my phone with me because it's too heavy. Basically providing the same range of services, including, you know, studying on link. So that's to start with. Uh, MP3 technology, of course, has made it so much easier to access audio than ever before. You don't have to go buy CDs. You don't have open real uh, tape. You don't have, uh, you know, cassette tapes. You just have MP3 files, which you send back and forth to your friends, which you can find, you can download, you can subscribe to podcasts. There's another, call it service, uh, the range of language podcasts, not only aimed at learners, but what I prefer to use is podcasts aimed at the native speaker on a variety of subjects. Um, you know, YouTube, YouTube has, uh, great variety of uh, videos, some aimed at the learner, some not. Very often subtitles are provided in the target language. Uh, with that, I can import those into Link and study them as lessons. So there's an unlimited supply in certain languages, unfortunately, not in all languages. And there are issues, for example, learning standard Arabic, there are very few videos with both the audio and the subtitles in standard Arabic. So there's an issue there. But Nevertheless, there's so much there that you can go to. Now, in order to make sense of what I'm listening to, uh, whether it be podcasts or, or even Netflix, I shouldn't leave out Netflix. We can download series there. We can download the, the dialogue to link. We can't capture the audio, but I can go through the dialogue and learn the words and phrases. And of course, there, online dictionaries become important. Online dictionaries are extremely important to link because in every, in every language, the learner, depending on their native language, can hook up with the language, with the dictionary of their choice. There are certain choice uh, dictionaries that are particularly useful. I am told that uh, Jisho in Japanese is particularly good. I don't study Japanese, so I have no way of commenting other than apparently it's an excellent dictionary, which provides you with stroke order for characters, different meanings, different phrases uh, that use the words that you're looking up. Uh, I find context reverso to be tremendous gives you a range and this is typical of, of what the online dictionaries provide now is a range of phrases using the word. Very often they'll give you text to speech. 
Context Reverso has a conjugating dictionary and there are other conjugating dictionaries so that if you look up a word, you can immediately see the conjugation. Or, uh, it's not so common for declensions, unfortunately. De declensions being you know, nouns and adjectives which change form, but for verbs, it's quite common to have the ability to, to go and see sort of the conjugation table uh, which I never try to remember, but as I look at it more often, I get closer and closer to a sense of how, how that verb works, remembering always that it's going to be a lot of exposure before it starts to click in. But I mentioned text-to-speech. There's a tremendous resource, text-to-speech. If I'm reading something in particular in Arabic, where it's hard to tell just how something is pronounced, text-to-speech tells me how it's pronounced. Now, I can't listen to a whole lesson in text-to-speech, but I can listen to words and phrases in text-to-speech. I still don't have text-to-speech in Persian, which is very unfortunate, but we haven't been able to find a text-to-speech service that, you know, fits with the other service that we provide at Link. Uh, Google Translate, what a tremendous service. You know, I, I uh, have my, uh, uh, you know, my online sessions with tutors and I struggle to say certain things and even after I'm still struggling. How do you actually say that? Because if the phrasing is kind of mysterious and, and so I go to Google Translate and I type it in in English. I want to go. I went yesterday. I should go. Anything that, you know, has a, a verb form or tense or mood or some structure that I find difficult to get a hang of in the language that I'm learning, I just type it in in English. I get it in the target language. And so I, I often go to Google Translate, not only to look up the meaning of a, of, a, of a word in the foreign language that I'm learning, but also to see how I would go about saying something in that target language. So that's a tremendous app. Um, I mentioned podcasts. Many podcasts, perhaps most, don't have transcripts. Without the transcript, I'm kind of in trouble because I depending on how far along I am in the language, I may only understand 20 to 30% without the transcript. With the transcript, I can import it into link, look up the words, learn the words, but without the transcript, it's very difficult. And it's frustrating to listen to things over and over again that you don't understand. So automatic transcription services, which I've mentioned before, like Happy Transcribe, quite, I mean, remarkably accurate, and they're all getting more and more accurate. Like all of these apps are getting better and better. I can remember even with Link when I was, you know, I was taking three or four seconds to look up a word and, and now it's, it's instant and, and I don't want to talk too much about Link 5.0 because, because Mark tells me not to talk about it because it's so complex because we are, we are um, writing code, not me, but the people within our team are writing code for the iOS system, for Android and for the, the web application. And so there's the, the back end that has to be changed. And there's, there's, it just, it's taking much longer than we expected, but it is going to be even better. So, um, just as you know, Google translate was much worse before right now, Google translate, which is also sort of machine translation. AI is remarkably accurate. Uh, automatic transcription is remarkably accurate and all of these things are only going to get better. Similarly with the link, we think it's only going to get better. Again, an indication of the world we live in, we have developers working on the link project with my son, Mark, I'm not involved, uh, from, uh, okay. Ukraine, Korea, Portugal, two in Ghana, uh, one in Bolivia. Uh, we have, uh, you know, customer service people in Serbia. It's an absolute, it's an international cooperative venture, uh, which is again, an indication of the world we live in, where we are connecting and because we can connect so easily with, pe with people. And I did mention, I think I mentioned italki. There's another wonderful application. They have such a wide range of tutors. Uh, with different price levels and different skill sets, and you can choose the one you want. Uh, we also offer uh, tutoring at Link, but we don't have the range of tutors that they have at Italki. So you know, and and there again, I've only touched on a few things. There are people who use Anki, Memrise. I don't use those, so I don't want to talk too much about them because I'm not that familiar with them. Uh, so this is the world we live in. This is the world we live in. So that language learning today 
because of this abundance of, of uh, wonderful functionality that people are creating. And, and six months from now, there will be people who will have created other, um, you know, apps that help us learn languages. So whenever I hear people say, well, you know, with AI, we won't need to learn languages because we'll just be able to uh, talk to the machine and then the machine will translate and the conversation will go that way. I don't believe it for a minute. I think the joy of communicating face to face with someone in another language, the joy of discovering their culture, as I have been doing now talking to my tutors in Iran and discovering that, that one lives in Rasht, which is in, uh, in uh, Golestan in the north. Is that right? Well, I can't remember anymore. One lived in Lahijan, Gul, Gulon, I think. I can't remember. See, that's the other thing. You forget everything. But if I got into the conversation, I'd remember. But so you're connecting. You're learning languages. You're connecting with people. Why would people give that up just in order to talk to a machine? I don't see it. The language apps are making language learning easier and people are going to be more and more successful. And so I see a very bright future for language learning. So thank you for listening. Bye for now.